Hi YouTube, today I'm going to be talking about my first tattoo. I got this tattoo a month ago and I just waited to make this video so that it would be able to properly fully heal so you guys can see uh, the, basically the final product um, rather than just the fresh ink because it does look uh, different from that. So I'm going to put up a picture of what it looks like now. It is a Pacific tree frog with a bunch of other natural elements. And frogs are quite important to me. Uh, I was absolutely obsessed with them as a kid. I would go and I'd catch tadpoles. I, I raised frogs. I had pet frogs when I was a kid. Um, I wasn't the best pet owner in the world, for sure, um, which is why I no longer keep them. But uh, I love these creatures. I think they're fascinating. I really think they're very beautiful. Um, and Pacific tree frogs are one of the most common frogs here in British Columbia. Uh, certainly they're the most heard frog. Uh, their call is very iconic. It shows up in a lot of movies, um, the sort of background sounds. Um, and I just think they're really beautiful. They're sort of raccoon-like masks, those sort of like long uh, masks that go across their eyes. Uh, and they can be so many different colors. They can change their color really, really quickly so they can go from like a mottled um, brown to like this really nice green color in like minutes. Um, they're really, really fascinating uh, amphibians to me. So when I started uh, designing this tattoo three years ago, uh, I sort of started off with a very, very stylized version of this frog. Um, and this is uh, what I first drew. And as you can see, it was very different from what I finally got inked on my body. Uh, it was this sort of zentangly mess, and really all I knew was that I wanted a frog, I wanted a sunburst, and I wanted a representation of the four elements as part of this tattoo. And on that first one, it's really hard to see. So I kept uh, doing new iterations of this design and drawing them over and letting it sit for a couple months and then jumping back in and drawing it. And uh, I sort of started making those um, elements more and more distinct until I ended up with the feather and the leaf as the frog's thighs. And then from there, I really started pulling things out and making them their own separate things. So I did a lot of designs. There was a lot of different things that I tried. Um, but the final design that I submitted to the artist is this one here. And this is really where I got what I sort of think of as my altar design. So for me, there's this square which represents an altar and then a circle, obviously, uh, a circle of power, but or you know, it's just a frame. Um, that's just sort of the symbolism for me for that. But I really like the way that it looks. Um, sort of, it's almost like that uh, Vitruvian man, but the Vitruvian frog. <laughs> it's not actually that, but um, uh, that's sort of what I named all the files on my computer when I was messing around with it. And then, obviously, for the elements, you've got a feather, so that's air. Um, and then the leaf is a broadleaf plantain leaf. And that is not the same thing as plantains that look like bananas. Um, the plantain, broadleaf plantain, is a small herb that grows here in British Columbia. I do believe it was introduced in North America, but it's really good for soothing um, scratches, cuts, um, stings, that kind of stuff. You can peel it in half and you get this sort of natural band-aid that you just stick onto your skin. And the artist did this really, really cool thing where they uh, made all these little insect bites out of a leaf. And I think that is super cool. It's one of my favorite things about uh, that tattoo. And the feather's awesome as well. Uh, and then around the edge of, of the square, I have these sort of what I think of as offerings. Um, they're just sort of um, connected uh, with the main tattoo. And they sort of frame it. And each of them sort of represents an element, although I'm kind of cheating with one because I do have uh, air as the feather as well. So I'm going to start in the bottom right hand corner from that one, and that's an ammonite fossil. I love ammonite fossils, they're beautiful. Um, uh, if you guys have been watching my videos at all, you know that I really like uh, stones and crystals and um, geology, and I have a large collection of that. And when I was a kid, we would always go to um, Banff in Alberta, and a couple, and Drum Heller, and they always had all, all these really cool fossils, and I loved the ammonites, and I always wanted one of those really big, opalescent ones. Um, so this is uh, one of the ones that I like so obviously water, it's a fossilized uh, marine animal. And then quartz crystals, perfect representation for earth. Um, I just really like the way that they're drawn on this version um, of crystals again, so that's sort of that side, that natural side. Everything in the statue was really important to me that it was um, uh, part of the natural world, that it wasn't something that was um, like man-made, and that it was... Um, uh, something that was local um, to where I 
uh, grew up here in British Columbia. Uh, and so then at the top there, um, it does kind of look like a lotus flower, but it is uh, supposed to be a bitterroot flower, um, which I mean, no one's ever gonna <laughs> guess this sort of something, just something that I have to tell. Bitterroot's this really cool purple pink sort of flower uh, that grows sort of on its own high up alpine regions and it can go a really long time without water, like years um, being completely dehydrated. Uh, really pretty flower, and so for me that's sort of an air quality, but I already had the, uh, the feather, so I was able to sort of fudge it with this one because I really like that flower and I really like the way that it looked in that corner. And then for fire, I was having a really hard time. Uh, the sunflower is, I think, the perfect representation of that because I could have done flames, but I don't really like the way that black work flame, flames look on tattoos, and I didn't want any color. Um, so I had a couple of things that I wanted. I tried candles, I tried some man-made stuff, but it really didn't fit with the rest of the tattoo. And um, sunflowers, obviously, just the name, the color, um, beautiful flowers. Um, they do grow here, so uh, I decided that they would make a perfect sort of fire element. So that's the tattoo, that's sort of what I got there. I and mean, then I'll just talk briefly about uh, this experience of getting it, because I mean, I'd never had it done before. I'd never had a tattoo before. You know, obviously I knew that it was gonna hurt. I didn't know how much it was gonna hurt or what kind of pain it was gonna be. Um, and I'd had this design that I drew up and I'd spent so long going, uh, doing it and I knew it was the right time. And I knew that um, there's a point where waiting and just waiting for the for everything perfect becomes procrastination. And I knew that if I waited any longer to contact an artist, that that would just be procrastination and be putting it off. So I found, I looked through all the all of the um, local tattoo artists and a few that were a little further away. And luckily for uh, me and my um, inability to get around, uh, I found an artist, Sylvie La Sylvie, and they work out of Timber Tattoos here in Nelson, BC, and also Vancouver in uh, Black Medicine. Um, and I just fell in love. Um, sort of portfolio. I'll link down to their Instagram in the description below so you guys can take a look at some of their other work. And I just I printed up a bunch of stuff that I really liked um, from them and I sort of uh, was looking at that for a long time and I just knew, you know what, with this new design that I've got with the new direction, this is just the perfect artist and I love this. So um, I contacted them and it was pretty quick. Um, I did have to wait a little bit um, to hear back because they are on vacation, but as soon as um, we got in touch, uh, it was really quick. I had a consultation um, where I said, these are the changes that I want to make. I really brought in some printouts of the actual Pacific tree frogs, and I said, okay, so I want this changed, and I want that changed, and I want it to look a little bit different than what I have, because while it was really important to me that it be my design and that I, uh, it basically be something that I've created, I also knew that I wanted um, the artist to bring it for it to be a collaboration in that sense. Um, because I think you get a better product that way, I think it looks better, and I really, really like um, that design that I finally ended up with. It's awesome, I'm so happy. And there were some changes, obviously, from what I handed in. So the sunburst is the biggest, um, most obvious change. It's completely different from what I uh, handed in. It's, it's got this very much of a compass look, which I really like, I think it's really cool. The, the process itself was pretty good. Um, I was a little nervous because I'd obviously never done it before, and I wasn't nervous about it being, I wasn't scared like that it would be too painful. I just was worried about what type of pain it would be. And that was just something that I didn't know until I, I, we actually started. But um, it turned out to be pretty bearable for me. Uh, I just sort of, because I'm, I'm on my stomach and I'm just doing this, right? Because um, it's on my leg, on the back of my calf. And I have like digestive problems, so that was pretty uncomfortable, just lying on the stomach. So um, that was perhaps more uncomfortable than the actual tattoo. Not more painful, but... Um, it sort of settled down after a while and it went and more or less went away. It's something that I, I kind of always have discomfort in my stomach. So, um, regardless, uh, I was just sort of um, in sort of my own head because I, you know, I couldn't see and I couldn't really talk because I'm lying on my chest and I've, um, so I just sort of like was, there was some really cool music playing. So I just sort of really got into that, focused on my breathing and I just sort of um, turned off my leg, uh, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, uh, just making it so that I couldn't move my leg uh, and just sort of um, telling myself, telling my brain that the um, 
that, that that limb, it doesn't work, it doesn't move, it doesn't do anything. So while it hurts and I can still, I still felt all that pain, um, it's still, uh, it, I didn't move and because I really um, didn't, you know, want to mess anything up or anything. So well, people keep asking me, did it hurt? Well, yeah, it did, but I mean, it's, it reminded me of getting dental work done that sort of jabby, jabby pain, and you just have to sit through it, because you have to do it. You can't just walk up and have half a frog on your leg. Um, but at no point, actually, did I think, oh, uh, I'm done, I, 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 I want to leave it. I never thought that I wanted it to be uh, like over and done with, which sort of surprised me, because that's usually how I react in those situations. Yeah, so I, I, I talked about that, it wasn't too bad. I, I don't really want to give it a rating out of 10, because I don't really like that system. It's kind of hard for me to describe, because there was different pains, you know. Um, but I guess if I was going to do it out of 10, where like 0 is I don't feel anything, and 10 is, I don't know, like childbirth. Um, it's like a 4, but like maybe up at the top near the knee, and then sort of in the middle like a 2, or maybe even a 1. So it sort of ranged depending on where it was. Anyway, um, I don't want to go on too long about this. Um, it's something that I'm pretty excited about at the moment, so I can ramble on. I am going down um, later today or possibly tomorrow uh, just to do a follow-up um, and maybe to make a, a few minor tweaks or to see if uh, Sylvie wants to make any um, like small changes to shading or anything now that it's healed um, because it does look a little different. Oh, I'll, I'll put up a picture of what it looked like freshly inked for you guys so you can see the difference there. Um, so if we do make any changes like that, um, I'll sort of, uh, I'll film an addition onto the end of this video so you guys can see um, what that's like. Really the only thing uh, that got changed was a really minor tweak to the moon at the center of the sunburst. It wasn't quite as symmetrical as I would like, so the artist went back in and just made it a little bit more even, and then uh, the right hand of the frog, uh, that just went over got, went over again, um, just to make it a little darker and a little bit more of a, a thicker line, I believe. Um, that was just something that uh, while they were working on the moon, um, they decided to touch that up too. So uh, leave a comment down below. Do you have any tattoos? Um, what was that experience like? Um, and if you have any tattoos, what are they? I'm just curious to interested to know. I, I love seeing uh, what other people have. So thank you so much for watching.